Madam President, Your Excellencies, Honorable Ministers, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, Friends from all over the world, I'm truly honored to warmly welcome you to this name-giving ceremony of the world's first green container vessel. It's a day we've all been looking immensely forward to, and a day and an achievement that many of you in this tent and watching online have worked so hard to collectively make possible.
a truly happy, proud and historic moment in the world of shipping. My name is Camilla Holse and I'm the head of public policy and regulatory affairs at Maersk, but today I'll be the one to guide you through our program. And what you just witnessed a moment ago was the Danish female choir Unklang beautifully performing Bob Dylan's The Times Are Changing and the Danish song I Denmark er jeg født, which means in Denmark I was born. And what better way to set the scene for today's event? Bob Dylan's song about a call for action about accepting and acknowledging that times are changing and the Danish song written by our national poet Hans Christian Andersen as a tribute to his home country. Denmark, a leading and pioneering green nation, will also be the home state of our new vessel that will proudly carry the Danish flag. Our program today includes speeches from the chairman of AP Miller Maersk, Mr. Robert Ukla, the CEO of AP Miller Maersk, Mr. Vincent Clerc, and the president of, our, of the European Commission, our guest of honor, and the soon-to-be godmother of the vessel, Ms. Ursula von der Leyen. The distinguished speakers represent an essential trinity for a green future, the courage for long-term commitment, the ability to execute, and the foresight to establish the necessary framework conditions. After the speeches, we will have the official name-giving ceremony just outside, and after that, there will be guided tours on board the vessel. Then we'll end by having a standing networking lunch, I'll come back with much more practical information, but already now there's some important safety instructions. Please take note of where the emergency exits are, and in case of any emergency, there's security staff on site to help and, and guide us. But now, without further ado, I'll invite our first speaker, the chairman of AP Müller Maersk, to come on stage and share with us some of your reflections on the green transition, a topic that I know is close to your heart. Mr. Robert Ugler, please. Thank you, Camilla. Madam President, Your Excellencies, Honorable Ministers, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, Friends of the House. On behalf of Ape Moller Maersk, on this beautiful day, I'm deeply honored to welcome all of you. Thank you for being here on this important day for the naming of the world's first container ship designed to sail on green fuels. Your participation not only adds to the significance of this occasion, but also underscores the power of unity and the power of collaboration as we jointly address what I think many of us believe is our generation's biggest challenge. We're here to celebrate a ship, but in all fairness, it is fairly modest in size. As mentioned to Madame President, When we enter the tent, this feeder vessel is only about 10% of what the biggest container ships usually carry. It holds a nominal capacity of around 2,120 foot containers. So it is a feeder ship. With that said, while it is fairly small, its importance and its impact transcend its physical dimensions. Trade is an integral part of human history, having connected communities for thousands of years. Trade enables critical supplies to reach what would, other be, what would otherwise be isolated corners of the world. And trade creates jobs when entrepreneurs and companies find markets for their products. Close to 90% of all trade is ocean-based. Moving goods by sea is by far the most effective, environmentally friendly mode of transportation. However, given the scale of ocean trade, it comes with a significant carbon cost. In total, close to 3% of the world's greenhouse gases are emitted from ships. Now, this is not a recent development. In fact, for almost 150 years, our supply chains have been highly dependent on fossil fuels. The first ship to sail with a Maersk star on its funnel 
was named Laura. Laura was propelled by a coal-based steam engine. She was designed during the Industrial Revolution, which transformed how we produced and consumed energy as a society. Some, year, some years later, our group ordered the first ship with a diesel engine, an equally significant technology. Today, more than a century later, we embrace a new few. Similar to Laura, the steamship Laura, this ship represents an industrial revolution, yet of a green character. Two and a half years ago, many in our industry argued that liquefied natural gas was the future fuel for shipping. But LNG, as we call it, is still a fossil fuel, and its methane slip is considered highly damaging to the environment. At the time, many did not see any green alternatives. A lot has happened in the last few years, and in my humble view, this very ship has become the catalyst for such a change. Next year, from January onwards, Maersk is taking delivery of a series of much bigger ships, all, all, all to sail on green methanol. And equally important, there is now a broad and growing followership across our industry. As we speak, more than 170 ships are about to be built or are being built or retrofitted to sail on green methanol. And we're not just talking about container ships, but also bulk ships, cruise ships, ferries, car carriers, tankers. Hopefully, and that is our aspiration and ambition, this is the beginning of a green revolution of our global supply chains. Together with partners in this room and elsewhere, we are exploring other pathways to decarbonize trade, including other fuels. With that said, the most important question is no longer how to develop new technologies, but rather how to speed up the implementation of the solutions available. Or to be more direct, as highlighted by the former US President Al Gore, the question is not how to solve the climate crisis, but whether we would do it in time. To successfully transition away from fossil fuels, we must jointly address the next big challenge, and that is to enable and scale the world's supply of green fuels. And let me just illustrate the magnitude of this challenge. By 2030, Maersk alone needs approximately 5 million tons of green fuels. And that is a real requirement given the order book we now have. Today, the global production of green methanol is below 100,000 tons. The offtake requirements for green fuels from ourselves and others in shipping are huge. No company, no investor will be able to pull this off by themselves. Of course, we need the support of our many customers to be successful. Our customers have to embrace green transport solutions. But probably most importantly, our industry needs strong regulatory frameworks and the right incentives. This is truly critical. I'm very grateful for the significant efforts of Madam President, Madam President's colleagues, and the government of Denmark in this respect. And some good uh, examples of the progress we're seeing is the inclusion of shipping in the, in the EU ETS framework, as well as IMO's recently revised greenhouse gas reduction strategy adopted um, at the MEPC meeting this summer. I also value the ongoing dialogues in the EU and elsewhere in the world about the necessary industrial policies required across the value chain to enable the production of competitive green fuels. The investment in production and infrastructure um, 
facilities represent a major opportunity to establish new green, new green industries. We must make sure these investments happen. As we face obstacles on our journey ahead, let us be reminded and encouraged by our common purpose. The primatologist and anthropologist Jane Goodall once said, we have not inherited this planet from our parents, rather we are borrowing it from our children. With this in mind, I sincerely thank our many, many passionate colleagues, partners, but also officials for valued collaboration and for your relentless efforts to turn the tide on climate change. You have my deepest respect. And finally, let me say we're also deeply honored that Madam President has decided to attend this historic milestone and accept it to become godmother of this ship. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the inspiring words about why the world needs the green transition and what it'll take to get us there. We now have the vessel, but we still need to solve around the cost-competitive green fuels. And that'll be crucial, especially for AP Miller Musk and its incoming fleet of green vessels. And who better to talk about that and what it'll take to complete the green transition from a business perspective than the CEO of AP Miller Musk. So Mr. Vincent Clerk, I kindly ask you to come on stage. Thank you. Madam President, Your Excellencies, Honorable Ministers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and friends of the House. Today marks a significant moment for AP Moller but perhaps more importantly, an inflection point for an entire industry. An industry often linked to its environmental impact, environmental impact and rightfully so. Across the entirety, of the global supply chain, from planes to trucks to railroads, ports and warehouses, the logistics industry accounts for 11% of the global carbon emission. As just highlighted by our chairman, shipping alone, a hard to abate sector, makes up three of those 11%. The vessel we celebrate today is a crucial first step towards a solution for the shipping industry but also a step that may encourage and outline a path forward for other hard to abate sectors. In 2018, when AP Moller Maersk announced its industry first commitment, we frankly did not have a path to get to zero. Our ambition back then was to get our first methanol ship in the water by 2030. Well, it wasn't easy, but we found a path. And today we know how to achieve climate neutrality. And we are, and what we are most pleased about is the followership that this ship has seen from the entire industry. In the next few years, this pioneering ship behind us will be joined by more than 100 methanol container vessels ordered by various companies, all dedicated to climate neutrality trajectory. The strong and rapid involvement from the industry is essential to accelerate the innovation and adoption of new technologies. This is fundamentally required to meet our goals. I am convinced that with this ship, we are entering a phase where multiple technologies and solutions can coexist side by side in the same ecosystem while collectively reducing emissions. The first vessel strongly demonstrates that if you want to go beyond, you need to go together. The list of contributors to bring this ship to life is very long. I want to start by expressing my gratitude to our majority owner and our board of directors for, the, for their unwavering support and trust that you have extended as we embarked on the decarbonization journey. What seems intuitive today was not a few years ago. 
but you supported us all the way. Furthermore, I want to recognize the hard work done by so many colleagues across Maersk, and not least the Maersk crew making its first historic journey from South Korea to Copenhagen. Captain Peter Wilhelm van Rijn and Captain Brian Sørensen and their crew representing all of our highly and dedicated seafarers. Today's historic milestone is indeed a testament to the collaborative efforts and unwavering support from our partner organization. I'd like to extend my deepest gratitude to our honored partner, the Korean shipyard Hyundai Mipo Dockyard, to our main engine supplier, MAN Energy Solutions, to the auxiliary engine supplier, Hyundai Heavy Industries Engine Machinery Division. Let me also acknowledge the pivotal role of our fuel supplier, OCI, who provided the methanol for this maiden journey, and European Energy, the future primary fuel supplier for this vessel. And until European, European Energy's plant in southern Denmark becomes fully operational, Equinor will graciously step in as a supplier. I also want to thank all regulators who contributed, including the Danish Maritime Authority for the Danish flag and the American Bureau of Shipping for the vessel classification. Thank you for helping us turn a vision into reality. We set a new standard in the industry and for being such a significant part of this journey. Across the globe, almost 10,000 companies have committed to reach net zero by 2050. 40% of Fortune 500 companies have set binding targets. From a climate perspective, from a human perspective, and from a commercial perspective, the only thing that makes sense is to lean in and accelerate the energy transition. In this transformation, the backing of our customer is vital. And I'd like to extend a genuine thank you to our customers for not only partnering with us, but also for their willingness to co-lead this journey. Since 2019, we have offered low emission products called Eco Delivery designed around green fuels compatible with our current fleet. The backing for this has been overwhelming from the start. And hundreds of our most forward-thinking customers are committing to eco-delivery, some even in contracts that encompass 100% of their shipping needs. What's equally important to us is helping customers decarbonize the entire supply chain end-to-end. -end. As such, our efforts are not only addressing just the 3% emission from shipping, but also the broader 11% from the entire global supply chain. On land, we are building green warehouses, electrifying our terminals, and we have close to 500 electric trucks in service or in order at this time. At sea, our new green vessel that we are celebrating today will give us valuable experience with operation on green methanol, enabling greater impact once fuel volumes are secured for the larger vessels that we have in order. Green methanol is our fuel of choice, not because, because it is our fuel of choice now, because it is the only scalable solution that can meet the net zero requirements. Neither we nor the climate can afford complacency or waiting for other solutions to emerge in the late 2020s. In the past two years, we have locked orders for 25 ships able to operate on green methanol. 19 of those are already in production. And they will be in the sea by 2025. Transition in the propulsion of a vessel is very rare. We have seen three major change in the past 140 years of existence of our company. And Maersk has taken part in all three. They were all revolution, but they all took time. Now we embark on the next transition, this time as a first mover. We like to see it as a testament that when we unite, 
through determined efforts and partnerships, a tangible and optimistic path forward to a sustainable future will emerge. We have looked forward to this day. It is a long awaited culmination of the efforts of many individuals and years of united work. Yet we are acutely aware that this is just a beginning. Ahead lies even greater challenges, but as it is the case with all significant advancements, it starts with one. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vincent Clerc. We can do a lot, but we cannot do it alone. Both you and the chairman mentioned the importance of political will and supporting EU and international regulation. As a true pioneer of the green transition of Europe, you have been instrumental in including shipping in the green framework, making this vessel the living proof of the EU's Green Deal in action. It's therefore my immense honor to welcome the President of the European Commission, Ms. Ursula von der Leyen, to the stage. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear Anna, dear Robert, dear Vincent, excellencies, ministers, distinguished guests. It is such an honor for me to be here today to christen the world's first green container ship. You have already heard from Robert and from Vincent how important this moment is. I couldn't agree more. Just a few years ago, a large vessel sailing on green methanol would have been unlikely, perhaps even impossible. So what led us here? Climate change and global warming are not new phenomena. Science and politics have been discussing them for decades. And for just as long, we've all known that we need to cut greenhouse gas emissions. Yet when I took office four years ago, the idea of a net zero shipping sector was nothing just but a dream. Something was still missing to trigger big investments in climate-friendly technologies. You needed certainty about the direction of travel a clear route so that you could set sails. And we answered your call. In 2019, the European Commission put forward the European Green Deal, not only with a clear vision for Europe to become the first climate neutral continent, but also with binding law, which all our 27 member states, the biggest economic bloc on earth, signed up to. And this has created the predictability you needed to act. Under the Green Deal, we adopted several legislative proposals to make the shipping sector cleaner and more sustainable. And it was Maersk who seized the opportunity with a famous Danish foresight. Two years ago, as you said, you ordered the first methanol-powered ship. And before the end of this decade, you expect 25 of your vessels to sail on green methanol. This will save 2.75 million tons of CO2 per year. And thanks to green fuels to be produced here in Denmark by solar power. What an achievement. What you have achieved needed vision and it needed leadership and joining forces. We have all understood that we are in this transition together. The European Green Deal aligns political ambition and public investment with private investment and innovation. And this beautiful ship is a first fruit of this cooperation. And there is a second element I want to highlight. Not only did Maersk see the direction of travel, but pioneers like you 
are shaping the economy of the future. This event is a big deal, not only for Europe, but for the whole world. As you said, 90% of the world trade is carried by sea. International shipping represents 3% of the global greenhouse gas emissions. By successfully decarbonizing shipping, we're not only promoting our fight against climate change, we're also creating new supply chains, new industries, and thousands of new good jobs. And this is the reason why the European Green Deal is delivering, because we are marrying ecological responsibility with economic opportunity. The next priority is to secure green fuels, as you said, at scale. Take hydrogen. By 2030, we aim to produce and import 20 million tons of renewable hydrogen each year in the European Union. This is possible because we are already deploying renewable energy like never before. This year, for the first time in Europe, we generated more electricity from wind and sun than from gas. And with abundant and affordable renewables, there will, of course, be more investment into alternative fuels like green hydrogen, like ammonia, and like methanol. And because shipping is global, our efforts don't stop at Europe. We worked hard, as you said, within the International Maritime Organization towards ambitious global action. The agreement reached last July to cut the carbon footprint of international maritime transport is a real milestone, a real milestone. We have to build on that and combine it with a robust global pricing mechanism for greenhouse gas emissions in the maritime sector. And this will then protect first movers like you are here at MERSC. It will empower more pioneers to follow your example and sustainably sail at high seas. And it could create not only global revenues for domestic innovation, but also support developing economies and emerging markets. Support them in innovating and in coping with the fallout of climate change. Dear guests, this ship, this moment, embodies Europe's decision to pioneer the fight against climate change. We're turning a noble generational task into a new growth strategy. On this journey, only the horizon is our limit. I am confident because we know our destination and our sailing ships together are on a clear course. We count on you. We know we can rely on you. So let's do the action that is necessary. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam President. We're truly grateful to have you in this historical ceremony. Having you as the godmother of our vessel is a testament to your personal commitment to the energy transition of Europe and what we see as public-private partnership when it's best. We now move on to the next part of the agenda, and I think the moment we've all been waiting for, namely the official name-giving ceremony of the vessel. So ceremonial na naming of ships is a long-standing and very important naval tradition that dates back thousands of years with varying specifics, of course, but with the overall aim of ensuring the crews and the vessel's safety at sea. The ceremony that you'll now witness actually dates back to the Vikings, so do expect some noise and some horns. <laughs> <laughs> After the ceremony, there'll be a uh, godmother photo, uh, and then the first group will go on board the vessel, while the rest of us enjoy another performance by the choir Unklang that you heard before. 
Then we'll all be guided to the lunch area where we'll have a standing uh, lunch where in parallel with the next groups going on board the vessel. Madam President, your excellencies, honorable ministers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I now kindly requi request you to kindly exit the tent and there'll be staff to guide you uh, where to stand, but please approach the platform. And I think with that, there's only left for me to wish you all an enjoyable and memorable name-giving event. Thank you. Don't take too many steps backward. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Madam President, recognizing the values you represent for Europe, we are deeply honored that you have accepted to become godmother for this pioneering vessel. Will you please do us the honor of naming the vessel? I name you Laura Maersk. As you sail the waters of the world, may your journeys be smooth and your tasks su successful. May you bring happiness to the crew and be a safe haven for all who board you. And may you bring prosperity and pride to all. I wish you God speed. Close. Anna, and indeed, and the little ones. Now comes the big moment. You have to be here. <laughs> yes. And where is Anna? Anna. Anna, why don't you come? So why didn't you come? You have not been there yet. And where's the little one? Ah, here. Thank you. 
this one. What? Well, I just pushed the button. Yeah, I have to push the button. So you know what? You can call me. Hey, but if you want to know, my book is on Amazon, but I could give you some free tips and tricks. You want to do that? So this ends the formal ceremony. Let me say a, a big thanks, uh, Madam President. It was a, a flawless executed naming. We're not surprised. This is a, a small memento for this historic milestone and, and for your support to our industry. A big thanks from our end. Apparently, one, one, one more photo down here. So
Chill to the marrow in them bones. Why?